Stitchers, it's Becky the Obsessed Stitcher back for an update. Today is Sunday, September 24th, and it's been a while. I'm always saying that since my last video. I uh, wanted to get some progress and have um, some things to show you. Uh, my last regular floss tube video, I um, said I was going to give away my pattern and the threads that I have for my cardinals on a sled. I had finished it and I had shown you all my finish. Here it is. So I want to go ahead and do that giveaway before I uh, did anything else. So there were 12 uh, commenters that said they wanted the pattern. So I've gotten the number, random number generator, 1 to 12, and number 7, and it's Brandy Stoker. So Brandy, I will um, send you a message or reply to your comment, I guess, that uh, you won it. And I will circle your name so you can give me your address and I can get that off to you. So congratulations, Brandy. So I'll put that away. So the first thing I want to do is go through my whips. Um, I've got a lot of thrift store haul, uh, but I do have a lot of progress, I feel like. Um, so let me put this down there. Um, the one I've been focusing on, get out of my file, is the tapestry sampler that Lori at Mischievous Stitches had uh, lent me the pattern. So here is what the uh, pattern or the finish will look like. Everybody knows what it looks like. It's beautiful. Lori's turned out gorgeous. Framed up gorgeous. Uh, so that's where, that's the goal. And then this is where I am on this pattern. So I've gotten pretty far. Um, I've kind of unrolled it so you can see it, but I have uh, started on the third row of letters and I'm um, trying to do a little bit of the border and a letter, a little bit of border, so hopefully I kind of end at the same time, but it's working up great. I love this pattern. Uh, it's just beautiful. So thank you, Lori. It's been really, really great to stitch on. And that's on uh, 18 count Ada that I copy and tea baked baked and basted uh, with Bonna's tutorial. Um, I love, uh, I'm going to, oops, my, <laughs> I have this Fitbit that has a magnetic closure and it is constantly attaching itself to things like needle minders. Um, it's a beautiful needle minder I got from Jen at Delicious Threads. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Anyway, um, 18 count Ada. I love um, stitching on Ada. I I love the way linen looks, but uh, Ada is so easy to stitch on. So there's where I am on the tapestry sampler. Uh, I had a, a starting to finish from since I last saw you. I had a find of four Prairie Schooler Santas, actually uh, multiples of the first four that were produced at an old craft store that was going out of business in our area. It's out in a barn. And so I've been kind of de-stashing them, but I wanted to also stitch them. So I started off with the first one. This is 1984 Prairie Schooler Santa. And his face is actually this uh, weird cloth that everybody um, doesn't seem to like. Davos, khaki Davos. So I didn't want to, I don't have that, and I just wanted to use a scrap. So I stitched, I dyed some 18 count uh, Ada a gray. It's the pearl gray. It's a little mottled. You're probably not going to see it. But I did change the colors a little bit. I changed the green. Um, well, I guess that's the only color I changed. The green that it called for was it just looked funny on the gray. And then I stitched, I guess you can see in the camera, I stitched his skin in. 
and I kind of felt like you couldn't see his beard and eyebrows, but looking at it on camera, you can. So turned out okay. It was fun to stitch, you know, just big blocks of color, very simple. And again, on Ada, it was great. And this is little stretcher bars. When uh, last year, almost a year ago, when Vana came out and we met her, she this is she was stitching on. I don't know. It might have been a prairie schooler at the time. Vana was it? Anyway, she had it on stretcher bars and um, really easy to do uh, for a little. Just I used got those little tacks that you use with stretcher bars and um, put it on there. And actually, in my uh, artisan floor stand, I can put it in there. But it was so close, I had to turn it upside down and turn my pattern upside down. I turned the actual physical, uh, my working copy. I did have a digital copy, but I, uh, Jen and at Delicious Threads and somebody else told me, I can't remember who it was, that I had posted it on Instagram upside down that you can lock your, everybody probably knows this, your iPad screen, turn it upside down and lock it so it'll stay that way and not flip on you. Um, and so I could stitch on this side of the, or on this side of the canvas and not have it so close to my stand that I couldn't get to it. So that was kind of fun. So I stitched him upside down for, for part of the border. But anyway, he turned out cute. So I, you know, I'll do the other three I have and, uh, you know, maybe throughout my life, <laughs> stitch them here and there and get a collection of them. But Anyway, it was fun to stitch. So that was a nice little finish. And then I did, um, I went on vacation last week. I, we went camping in our trailer. Not really camping. It was a campground. <laughs> and I left the tapestry sampler at home. I left uh, my Queen Anne's lace at home. I'll show you her. Uh, and I just picked some of my uh, projects that I um, don't stitch on very often. So anyway, one of them that I did stitch on, I'm going to show you the picture. It's out of this French book that I got quite a while ago, which I love. It is so gorgeous. Um, here, I'll show you this back cover. And I am doing this one. I actually, I want to work my way through the book. And this is the first one. So this is a picture of Le Cupcake. And I'm still on the cupcake. I'm doing it on a 40 count linen. So it's slow. Get it out of the pile here. Sorry, <laughs> I'm very organized. This is where I am on that. It's coming along wonderfully. So, it, you know, doing it one over two is, as everyone knows and says, stitching over one is just so easy. There's no twisting. There's no, you know, railroading. It's just very easy. So that was fun to stitch on. I had a little progress. That's where I am on that. And another one I took was my um, yellow primroses that my friend Terry brought me back the kit from Scotland. So that's what it'll look like when it's finished. And it's another one that I was stitching it and it just reminded me that how much I enjoy stitching on Ada because it's on 14 count Ada. So I did finish the bottom of, I've kind of got it up here the bottom part of the leaves and then I'm getting the stitch on the top and this is another needle minder from Janet Delicious Threads uh, so it's coming along it's you know not complicated but I managed to have to frog here and there but it'll it'll be cute when it's done got some back stitching I think that'll help I actually have back stitching on this little flower here that you can hardly see. I might pick a darker color because I can't see the back stitching and I know that'll help. Uh, 
bring the flowers out. So that one's coming along. And then another one that I have, I don't think I've shown you at all, is um, a pattern I got from uh, Annie B's Folk Art on Etsy, and she's coming to the Minnesota retreat, so I'm excited to meet her. I purchased this from her Etsy store. It is so cute. And I tried dyeing um, some fabric to get that blue color, but I just, a lot of the dye blues come out purple. So I had this um, really strange fabric from a thrift store haul. And so I've just done the top of the of her pattern. It's just the top one there in this strange blue fabric. But it's uh, going to be a small for uh, the Minnesota giveaway. I don't think I need to keep it a secret because they're going to be wrapped up. Um, I'm going to make a little pillow, I think. I have to consult my expert, Vanna, to see. I want to put cording on it, and I, uh, I'm i sure you can put cording on pillows, twisted cording, but I, I'm uh, wanting to do that, so I'll have to see if she, in her tutorials, if you do that. I know how to pin it onto a flat fold, and glue and pin, but this you don't want pins in, so I'll have to check that out. Anyway, that's my little sunflower from Annie B's. Cute. So it was a it was a finish, partial finish, but that's all I'm gonna do for the retreat. And then another um, project I took camping. Uh, I'm gonna put up a picture here. I my, the magazine is in my stash. I've just got working copies, um, so you can see it there. And this is how far I am. This was in my year of whips. It will never, never, never get done in 2017, but that's okay. Yeah, oops, showing the pattern there. So I'm doing it in a color that I think will go better and on tossed on my couch as, as a cushion or no, where they uh, yeah cushion. That's what you guys call it. We call it the pillow. You, the, the English call it a cushion. So anyway, that's what it's gonna be. So I um, just wanted to talk about your whips for a minute. I've really, really, really enjoyed it. And I know it started before, you know, the beginning of 2017. I, uh, you know, I just pulled out those certain projects and tried to focus on them while I've had a lot of new starts. I've had, you know, work, probably working on things that weren't on the list, but the thing I did not work on were all of my hades, and I've really missed them. And so I'm not while I probably haven't followed all the rules to the for the group and won't be in the drawing, that's you know, just having met Carlene um, and corresponded with her, and hopefully we'll continue to correspond. Uh, I'm due to send her a postcard. I've not been the best postcard pal. Uh, she's gave me um, the gift of a and a forest grew, which I haven't touched for a long time either. Um, but I won't be participating next year because I miss my haze and I just want to stitch what I want to stitch. And But it was great to focus on uh, all the projects that I had as part of it. I did have quite a few finishes, so I appreciate that. I appreciate Melanie's, all her you know work and efforts to run the group and have the idea and get us all paired up. So um, I just wanted to say that about your whips. I enjoyed it. I'll continue to focus on some of my... Um, projects that I had in that uh, group, but um, I do want to, I'm focusing on the tapestry sampler. I feel like, you know, I might be able to get that done before the end of the year. Um, but besides that, another new start I had was, um, I think I told, I did uh, mention in my last video that I wanted to um, stitch on Queen Lavender and Lace's Queens and Lace, along with uh, Andrea from uh, I Heart Cross Stitch, and she just uh, got a video up in the last few days. I haven't gotten all the way through it, but um, 
and because I don't know if she showed hers, but anyway, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and she does as kind of a stitch along. Um, go gold for Charlotte. Gold is the color of the, um, you know, bringing awareness to childhood cancer. So I did start it, um, and this is Queen Anne's Lace. And she's done kind of on a gray, but I um, wanted to uh, kind of do her on blue, and I finally I got a blue, a writ dye that is kind of an aqua, and did it very light, and it probably isn't going to show up on camera, and you'll have to excuse all my parked threads. They are a mess, but I am absolutely loving stitching on this so yeah you can't see it's just a very very faint blue it's kind of if you took one of those blues and these they're looking gray but they're actually blue um the fabric is very light colored it's a 32 count this Zweigart linen that I believe I got in Indiana last year um so I'm all, actually I'm right up to her arm, and so I think I'm going to stop my uh, diagonal, go back. I want to beat it, and then um, prob either work my way down or up in the diagonals. But she is very enjoyable to work on. Um, really loving it. So that's my little informal <laughs> the, the stitch along I created with Andrea and she was happy to have me join her but she's much farther hers is really pretty but there's mine and I tell you I've just gone down the uh, the beautiful ladies pattern trail with my moonflowers and um, I bought another one I will show you but uh, this Queen Anne's lace Never thought I would stitch her, and just loving the colors, the shading, just just beautiful. And I think my one last other start I have is I did a quick little video. It was probably kind of silly to put up. I was so excited to get this book, but then I just felt like I really didn't want to do a flip through because, I don't know, I just felt like even showing a picture is almost like showing the patterns. Um, but it was this uh, 20, 20 to stitch, the Michael Powell's 20 Christmas ornaments. So I chose, I'm going to better <coughs> cover the pattern, to start on this one. Can you see it? These little trees. And the thing is, he does it all in anchor. Uh, Loss. So I printed out, and I'm just keeping with this book and anchor to DMC conversion, but it's kind of a pain. And then I'm just, as I come to them, putting them on this little uh, Loran floss organizer. But this is how far I've gotten, just in the corner. That's on, that's to the top of it. And this is. Uh, 20 count Ada that it is a piece I think we got as a little freebie in uh, Indiana so I think I've got a little start on that yeah it's fun it'll be interesting I know his back stitching is when the uh, pattern reveals it or the picture reveals itself so but that's a that's a ways off on my Saturday morning uh, Christmas stitching and I'm not sure, I did actually get a, one of my thrift store finds was two box, floss boxes of DMC. Uh, pretty much full, kind of a variety of numbers. And I was putting them in my stash and then with, especially with this pattern, I didn't really want to pull, you know, kit up like I do. Here's how I do my floss. I've got my big floss boxes. I, I do not like to bobbinate, but of course the floss box came with them all bobbinate. I don't like to bobbinate. I 
put the card in here. And this one I don't have because it's that French one. It's colors. There's not a symbol. But usually I write the symbol on there. Then I keep the, you know, pull out my floss and put the extras back and put little pieces behind the card. So that's usually how I do it. But I didn't want to do that for this teeny tiny um, pattern. So what I decided to do was to get one of those um, double-sided floss boxes and take, go through all my flosses, pull out everything that I had on a bobbin still from the 80s. I still had bobbins that I had wound and had in the baby, babies. 80s. And when I came back to cross-stitching three years ago, I was bobbinating. So I had a lot of bobbinated uh, floss in my floss stash that, you know, was in with uh, pole skeins and bobbin. So I decided to um, get one of those double-sided things so I could have a whole set at my uh, chair. I remember a long time ago, um, Katie the stash, no, the Queen of Starts, I always get them confused, uh, had said that. She kept them all. She didn't pull them. And, you know, that was a long time ago that I saw her say that. So I thought I would try it. And I have spent hours and hours and hours bobbinating. But I finally have my bobbins all done, the, my whole set. Unfortunately, I have a lot of brand new bobbins, you know, they're full, they're fat, so not all of them fit, but just in this other little one, that's just the rest of the set, that's the end of the numbers. Um, but I wanted to share with you um, <laughs> what a ding-dong I am sometimes. So I, um, I ran out of bobbins, I didn't have any more, I had plastic ones and then I had some paper ones. So I don't know if you know what a silhouette paper cutter is. There's Cricut paper cutters. I think there's probably other paper cutters, but I used to do paper crafts, so I always held on to my silhouette. But I bought for 99 cents a bobbin cut file. So I could take, there's no, I can't find it, but take a piece of, of heavy card stock and cut out bobbins. So I have cut out the remainder, and here's all my cut bobbins. One, I didn't cut them, my machine cut them, but it cut, and I sized it to where it's exactly like, uh, you know, a, a regular floss bobbin. But, so you, you can see, and it cuts a little slit into it, so I've got my, um, it doesn't have the hole in it, I didn't bother to put the hole, but it was a nice place to write the number, and, um, and you know, tuck, tuck the thing away. So I've got them all nice and organized. So I've got plastic, the regular paper bobbins, and then my handmade paper bobbins. Yeah, I just did not want, I, I hate shopping. I, I know I, I, thrift stores are like a treasure hunt, but generally I hate shopping. So even though I love going to the craft store, I did not want to go out and just buy paper bobbins. So to me, it was better to, I don't know, it made me happier just to download the file, size the bobbin, and f it fills a page um, in the program, and I would just cut it, and because it's thick, it's kind of slow, so I would just cut and cut and cut, so you can see all my different bobbins, but here are all my hand-cut bobbins. <laughs> Anyway, so it's fun, I, and that then I did have have this by my chair, and as I was going through these, as I and I will you know put it back on Saturday morning as I need them, or I think that's what I'm gonna do, unless it's a fairly big project, and then I like doing this, and then I just hang it on my stand, and then I can get the floss I need. So anyway, so that was one thing. That was the thrift store find of two boxes of bobbins that led to me doing this, which which I actually, I love, but oh my gosh, hours and hours bobbinating, horrid, horrid, horrid. A couple more thrift store finds. Uh, when we were camping, I would, there was three thrift, thrift stores where we went up on the north coast um, of California. It's The town is called Fort Bragg. It's a fishing, old fishing community. 
it's beautiful. Mendocino, the town of Mendocino is up there. It's the county of Mendocino too. Anyway, there was um, three thrift stores. I didn't have great finds, but I did get another uh, frame um, to, as you, I showed you all my whips, they're all on frame. So that was for $2, got that. And then I got this. I thought this would be really cute as we're all watching uh, Chelsea and Priscilla and all their creative uh, finishing. I thought this would be cute to, um, you know, put, paint this and put a uh, cross stitch on there. But, oh, my gosh, is she not so cute? I actually may do the back and have her. <laughs> I don't want to cover her. She's so cute. But I thought this was a cute um nice size. I was thinking actually maybe the yellow primroses might be cute on there. They might be about the right size to, you know, put over the mat board and then put another piece with fabric and put her, put them on here. But isn't she cute? And hand painted, I would assume. It's got to be, but it's, that was another find. And then on an outing here in my area, I found this, which I thought again in the Chelsea and Priscilla fashion needs painting, but um, I thought that would be really cute to maybe put the um, sheet metal in here and, and swap things out, but I may have to glue down the swinging thing here, but I thought that was really cute. And then also, and I had posted these on Instagram, these are old, and this is the, my floor stand is Artisan Designs, and these are the bars they sell separately. Um, I got two packages of these, each for $3, and that you could tell, for those of you that have them today, you know, when you buy them, you get a solid piece of wood, but these or I'm not sure what that is, where they put them together and it holds your fabric into the, the rod. But anyway, I got two sets of these for $3 each. So that was, cause then, and then of course I have to go Google it. How much were those? And they're like, I don't know, $18 to buy a set of those. So I got a good deal. And another thrift store find, which sure I'm not alone but this one said it was free and while it will need to be painted it was free because it had some burn marks on it but I thought this was cute I liked it nice size you know just to put one long uh, piece in it so that was a great find didn't cost me anything then when I ordered um, the clinic for my Queen Anne's lace. I uh, ordered them from Stony Creek, and I'm not ordering every month to get the freebie, but because I needed the clinic, I wanted to get. I actually started her on September 1st. I um, got these freebies that they were offering, so that's one. I know it's this whole thing, one a month, but I just got that one. I said it was free, and I was ordering anyway, and they also had this one. I thought that would be fun to do on a pretty piece of hand dyed. And then um, I said I had fallen down the, the trail to the beautiful ladies, Miss Nora Corbett's ladies. So I got this one. I, uh, I think she is gorgeous. Oh, there you go. And she is the spring queen. M B34. So she will be pretty with her someday. And then uh, this is a needlepoint book, which I have thought that these needlepoint patterns will translate to the 5D diamond painting I've been doing. I don't think I've said anything in my videos. I have posted on Instagram. And I'm going to insert at the end of this video, uh, I've got a clip of when I got my kit and then a clip of doing some of the actual diamond painting. If you're interested, I'll put it at the end so you can 
stop and um you know if you're not interested you don't have to watch it but if you're interested it's it's a fun a fun craft i actually haven't done it too much lately but i had i did have a page finish on my hade i'm doing the goddess of healing and i will insert a picture of her um during that video clip i'll have i'll have to get it together i don't have a picture over here but you'll see a picture of her and then of my kid as it came as i unwrapped it it's about nine minutes long and I can't remember how long the my actual diamond painting just to show you what it what it looks like if you care if you haven't seen somebody else do it there are some others that are making videos but um, it's kind of fun but I thought you know the hay you the, the hay is it's a quick stitch or it's a mini it's a mini but when you do it on their canvas it's ten di stitches diamonds to the inch so it's the canvas is huge. I can't even show you how big it is because I have it all taped down to my table. It's not movable at all, but it's huge. So I was thinking that needlepoint, and I this has some great needlepoint, but needlepoint, I'll just kind of show you, those um, patterns would convert really well to the diamond painting. But uh, so this is another book I found. I picked it up because I thought, and I, I have many needlepoint books because I feel like you can translate to cross stitch fairly easily. But I thought uh, that these would be fun to try. You know, when, if ever, I finish the mini Goddess of Healing, um, I would try a uh, try one a, a needlepoint pattern. I thought that would be a fun thing. So anyway, got this guy for a dollar thrift store. Love that chicken. And then a friend of mine gave me this beautiful um, floral afghan. Um, yeah, the only, those are the only pictures with those beautiful letters. Thank you, Suzanne. So pretty. And then at a um, library, book, Friends of the Library bookstore, a lot of libraries will have them. I found this, just for the best of Just for Cross Stitch book. Yeah, I think it might have been $1.75, $3, can't really remember, but I uh, thought that was a great find. Has some some pre-marked things that I might want to do. <laughs> it's funny how they had left them in, but that was a, a great find. I love this. It's got, it's done in a bell pull. You've probably seen it. Uh, let me show you a shiny pattern. It's really pretty. And then I take another thrift store. <laughs> um, I got these old, and they are uh, Jeremiah Junction uh, magazines, which I, I never saw them back in the day, um, but I just think that, you know, they're kind of country, but I think they're cute. Um, you know, I hopefully someday we'll stitch something out of them. Got that one. I got this one. Just look at that. I think it's so funny with the cats and the bunnies there. You know, lots of bees and flowers and hives. Very cute. Oh, there it is. A little bit bigger picture. There we go. Look at that. Cute. Cute, cute. And this guy. these out. Oh, cute. Okay, look at these. So, oh, where are they? Where are they? Oh, they're tiny, but it's a little Halloween mice dressed up. So cute. So these are very cute magazines. Oh, no, this one isn't the Jeremiah Junction. It's Better Homes and Gardens. Cross-stitch and country, country crafts. 
I probably already heard this more than one time over. And then I found this book too. Um, I have a few of these, but I did not think I had this one. So just a variety of cute things. There's the oh, there's a cute one. The chickadees. So anyway, that's about it for me. I, again, if you're not into 5D diamond painting, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, commenting. Thanks for spending the time with me. I sure do appreciate it. If you want to see what 5D painting is about, uh, stay tuned. I don't, I taped the you know, unboxing a long time ago, so I don't even remember what I said about it, so I can't give you an intro. Um, and then my, uh, the uh, actual diamond painting, hopefully I still have that video. I didn't want to remake it. It took a few takes and positioning of the camera to get it, but anyway, check it out if you're interested. Uh, thanks for spending the part of your day with me today, and happy stitching! Thanks, bye-bye. Hey Floss Tube, it's Becky the Obsessed Stitcher, and I just received my diamond painting package from AliExpress from China. I um, thought I'd open it on camera. I have watched, not watched, but uh, seen Paulette Bev, uh, Paulette PC, uh, all the ones she's doing, and little snips has been showing us and there are some other floss tubers also so it looked like fun and I thought I would try it I'll have to go get the pattern that I kitted up for it it's a Hade the one I got it's called um, Goddess of Healing it's a mini but I think in on this canvas it's quite large so I'm gonna go ahead and open it go down a little bit. It almost looks like it's waterproof with all this tape on here. I'm not sure how to open it, but so I got the canvas and hopefully all my tiles. There's a uh, Facebook group that is for diamond painting for Hades. Um, and there's a great instruction sheet on um, how to order, figure out what you need and how to order it. So I followed that. It was really helpful. Uh, the one thing I had trouble with, you know, just my own uh, not thinking it through, but how to get all of the... Um, tile order onto one sheet because if you weren't aware um, they have a tile for each DMC color so you can kit up um, any DMC pattern, pattern that calls for DMC. You just order the same number for the tile that you do would use for the gloss. So, actually wrapped really well. So well, I'm having a hard time getting it out of here. Uh, so the canvas is uh, 10 tiles to the inch, so even though my paid is a mini, um, it's still large because it's uh, a 10 count fabric. What I'm puncturing, okay, cool, tiles. Right here, put that back down. I'm in my dining room, it's my uh, big blank walls. So, 
nice. It's in a nice tube. And I will link um, some of the video or Sarah Sarah at Little Snips her philosophy video on her channel where you can see uh, her doing it. But um, the packets come in uh, a specific number of tiles. So the ordering sheet helps you figure out how many packages you need for all the uh, stitches in the hay. It, you know, it tells you you've got, you know, 3,221 or 21 stitches of one color. And so you put it in and then it helps do the math. But um, so this is DMC 498 and all the different colors. So I've got, um, I've been thinking about how to organize them. So here is all my DMC floss. <laughs> There's some more, and oh yeah, there's my, the sheet that I sent them. Feel there's more, and more, I think that, oh, oh, there's one more. Yeah, it's not going to come out, so now I'm going to try to get the canvas out. Curious, it's sticky. Really hope it's gridded. Okay. I ordered it. So this is the sticky part right here. You peel this back and it's sticky and I can see the grid underneath. But then this part is a uh, canvas and I've seen people, or I haven't seen, but um, people uh, to finish them will wrap it around a frame and staple it so it kind of can be a frameless um, piece. Oh, it's inside here. And, oh, and I got, I asked for a tool set. So this is a little tray. And then, oh yeah, a couple little trays. Oh my goodness, wow. That's surprising. It, oh, and they sent little bags. Interesting. <clears throat> so these are the tools. I asked for a free tool set. That was the recommendation of the um, young lady that put together the how to order one. But it, you put them in here and then, oh, you know. This is, no, oh, these are little bags, I guess, to store them in after you open them. But there's glue that you, like, pick up. Maybe this is the, no, these are stickers. Hmm. Because you, like, put a little glue on here, and then you pick up the tile, and then you stick it on here. So, uh, I don't see the glue. Another seller said that she couldn't send the glue that customs or whatever wouldn't allow it. So maybe it's in here someplace because these really look like stickers. They're not glue. So I'm not sure what to do about that, but it was nice. They actually sent two kits um, of tools for free. Yeah, look at these are pretty, pretty hefty tweezers. So that was nice. So let me get... Um, my pattern that I'm doing and I'm going to do what some people do. I'm going to run off and go get it and come back so you can, here, I'll, you can look at all my goodies, all my treasures. I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that. So this, I only have a teeny tiny picture. But this, and if you can see in there, you can see faces. So I thought that would be really pretty to do in these tiles. Uh, here's the name of it, Mini Goddess of Healing by Carol Calaveras. But that is what I'm going to do. So it is 
268 stitches wide by 335, so divided by 10, it's going to be 26 inches by 35, so I've got to figure out how to manage this uh, beast, but I did get it with non-sticky um, edges, so I can wrap it around something. I'm sure I'll finish it quicker than I would finish the haid, the actual cross stitch, but it still is going to be a long project because I'll have to go upstairs to get it all set up. But I just thought I'd share that with you. My unboxing of my diamond painting. I'm excited about it. I think it'll be fun, you know, because I needed another craft, right? But anyway, thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes today. Oh, I should say, today is uh, Friday, June 23rd, and I will talk to you later. Bye.